Desire for personal adornment is a universal human attribute that has been part of civilizations for countless generations. It's likely that the early inhabitants of the Southwest had jewelry and adornments made of rock, animal, and plant materials. While various materials could be used, some were held in higher regard like turquoise. It is still a highly prized stone that is often associated with sky, water, and to some symbolizes one of the six directions. Broken pieces of pottery were also fashioned into pendants to wear. Materials that already had a natural hole through the middle were chosen for adornment like fossilized crinoids. An oddity in the desert, shell bracelets and adornments were evidence of widespread trade as they were sourced from the coast in the Gulf of California. By the mid-1800s, adornments and jewelry made of glass, ceramic, or metal were introduced in trade. While Native Americans have been making jewelry since ancient times, silversmithing, however, was not introduced until the latter part of the 19th century. The Diné learned silversmithing from New Mexican Hispanos by the 1850s. Its city, Sani, was the first Diné accredited to making silver pieces in 1853. His students spread the scale by teaching others and even extending the craft outside of the Diné. Over the years, new techniques and styles emerged as more and more Native artists experimented with silver. By the 20th century, each tribe began to evolve their own techniques and create unique styles that incorporated Native symbols and materials. Hopi overlay, Zuni inlay, Petty point, Navajo stamping, and tufa casting are examples of different styles that have emerged in the last century. Today's contemporary work shows that artists are free to merge their own inspirations with their skills and traditions that have been passed down for generations. What traditional types of jewelry or adornments are typically worn in your family or culture?